Well, tonight was uh, one of our best performances of the season. Uh, and the reason is we, uh, we beat a very good team. USC is talented. Uh, they have all the parts to be a uh, Pac-12 champion and uh, to be a, a team that, you know, in March you play on a neutral court. They have a lot of uh, experience, a lot of answers. Andy Enfield does a great job coaching them and really developing their team as the season goes on. So we knew it was a big challenge, and uh, I think what makes this sweeter than most is that it's, uh, it's not easy to pick yourself off the mat. You know, losing a home game at McHale isn't a, isn't a good feeling. Uh, however, we are 81-3, and three, the last 84 games. But all three of them, you know, it doesn't feel good. And uh, to be able to go off of a Thursday night loss and be ready on Saturday uh, isn't, isn't an easy thing. And I really credit our guys and our team, our leadership of our team. And, you know, Raleigh, who's fighting through that injury and hasn't played well recently, to see him come out with that confidence it was, uh, it was a great feeling. So feel good about how we responded. And, you know, our season right now, especially the regular season, you know, is three weeks. And uh, hopefully we can really hit our stride and build off of tonight's performance. Does this team go wherever Raleigh goes? This team goes as DeAndre goes. And his defense sets the tone for a lot. You know, you have to realize he's seven foot, 260 pounds. And, he, you know, we made our mind up after the UCLA game that instead of bouncing him back and forth and letting him guard multiple bigs, to let him guard one, one of them. Because it's just so hard to go back and forth. And tonight when I watched him out there, I mean, he did a really good job on Boatwright. And he is so gifted. And when he's playing like that with energy, and it's not his shot blocking, it's his quick movement away from the basket at his size. I thought he set the tone. And, uh, but our defense was night and day. Even when they scored, they earned it. And at the beginning of the second half, for about three minutes, we reverted. We didn't play with great effort, and we weren't as connected. And you know what? It felt that way. But other than that small window of time, I thought it was one of our best overall performances because we played both. And our bench helped us, and we got contributions from a lot of guys tonight, uh, especially playing against a really good team. Feel encouraged by the inspiring way they played compared to Thursday? Yes, and you know uh, the one thing is, you know, every every team that you've had that you look back on and you say, man, that was one of my favorite teams or that was one of my favorite players. I've yet to see a group have it every single night, and sometimes you hope that when you don't have it, you can still win and fix it right away. You know, I think when you don't have it, and we didn't the other night against a very talented UCLA team. You know, they make you look bad. And uh, to their credit, whether it was Jalen Hands at the end of the first half or, you know, Golemon who made a bunch of three-point shots, you know, they have good players and they have a good coach. They have a good team. And uh, they came in here and took it to us. But the way we, we reacted to that I think says a lot about our team. And, uh, you know, it's kind of blocking out the criticism, moving quickly to the next opponent and controlling the things that we can control. And uh, we did that tonight. It's what I said after the last game. You just have to realize how much time he's missed. And then, you know, he's in a boot between games. Uh, we give him an extra day. And if we had no choice, I mean, it's not like we messed up. We were looking after his best interest. And if he has pain, you have to shut him down. By doing that, we got rid of his pain. And I think our hope is that he can be with us now from now until until the end. Uh, but he went a long, long period of time without any pain. And, you know, to see him play with that confidence. But uh, after the UCLA game, he, he did what we all did yesterday. If this were the game before that, we would have given him the day off. But, you know, it doesn't keep you in a rhythm. It doesn't build your confidence. But he came out tonight and had such great confidence. It was, it was fun to watch him play that way. Got to realize he, he didn't play very well in our two losses. And tonight, to have him play like that, we're a different team. Is he a guy who needs words of encouragement? All of our players need, need words of encouragement. You know, he, uh, but he's a confident kid. And uh, it always helps when the ball goes in and you play like that. I'm sure he'll, from this point forward, have a lot of confidence. From a big picture standpoint, when you look at what might have been, and then you come out of here with two games up on everybody else in the conference after this week, how does that, how, how does that make you feel, given how things might have fallen? Poorly. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I don't think we were panicking. Um, 
we lost the game. You know, we lost to UCLA, and uh, you know, sometimes a loss can really teach your team a lot of valuable lessons. And I really feel like everyone who played in tonight's game learned from that experience. And uh, I can't, we can't control what the other teams do, but we certainly can control our readiness and uh, our attitude, and uh, I think our focus. But we have a confident group, and uh, you know, the next game is going to be every bit as challenging as the one we just, uh, the one we just played this weekend. So. Um, We'll prepare hard and hopefully be be a team like tonight when we when we go up to ASU. Where would you guys be without the play of um, Dusan in the last month or so? He's been incredible. Tonight was another double double. I just think Dusan has become an All Conference player. Statistically, there's no denying that his field goal percentage, his rebounding, almost seven and a half to eight a game, sixteen points. I mean, he does it game in game out. He's a terrific kid, you know. I'm, I hope he can become the all-time winningest player in school history. I think it'll be a remarkable story, considering where he was when he came here from high school, how he stayed, and uh, and how he's really impacted this last team. But both Parker and him, I think, showed a lot of leadership over the last couple of days, and uh, they had our team ready. What does it say about Aiden that he makes? After all the other stuff he does, he makes that three that pretty much. Nailed it for you guys tonight. I mean, 70-point lead or whatever. Yeah, I mean, DeAndre was disappointed in his performance against UCLA. You know, he he didn't have it that night. And you know, when you when you say a young guy doesn't have it, he had a double double. It's almost not fair. But all of the games that we've watched him in, and all of the practices, that was the one game that he just he just didn't have that energy that he usually has in bounce. And uh, and I think it was a great learning experience for him as well how these teams and players are, are coming in here to attack us, right? Uh, when you have the reputation that he has and you're playing Arizona, you're going to give your best effort. And uh, But he was ready tonight and uh, did a great job. Like I said, his defense was a big reason we won. And also, I want to talk about Alonzo. You know, very quietly, you know, he had eight rebounds tonight, 14 points, four assists, and had another game where, from an offensive perspective, he was really efficient. Washington apparently lost. Everybody's got five losses now except you. All of a sudden, two games up in the loss column. How, does that surprise you? How, how do you feel it? We, we, we can't control that. You know, uh, all, all we can control is, uh, is tomorrow, the next day, having a focused approach, continuing to develop our team, um, you know, working hard down the stretch to be the best team that we can be. Uh, I think it's good for our group that we have only one game next week. We've been hard at it for a while, and uh, I think it comes at a really good time. But, you know, going up to ASU, you know, just looking at what Bobby's done with their program, the crowd that they have, uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence. They've had a great season. It should be a really challenging game, but a fun atmosphere, and uh, and we have to be ready for sure. We're going to have to play our very best in that game. Coach, with, uh, with, with DeAndre, just from the course of the season from you know, November to now, what, what are the biggest changes you've seen in him? You know, the changes in DeAndre are just simply that he's, uh, I think, learned a lot. His work ethic has continued to improve. Uh, he takes care of business off the court, on the court. He's focused. Uh, it's fun to be around. Um, he's not a moody guy. You know, he's he's uh, brings a smile to your face. And I think he's really enjoyed his time in college and, and with us at Arizona. But he's learned a lot about the game. He plays both ends. And I think that will serve him well when he leaves here. But, you know, the thing that I appreciate the most about DeAndre is he's never really used us as a pit stop. He's uh, done everything that we've asked. He's worked hard. And I think he's entirely focused on playing well, but leading his team and having his team win. I don't know if anybody was more disappointed after the UCLA game than him. And uh, But he's a great kid. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of really good kids. But... Because of who he is, his stature, it's nice when you can coach him. Emmanuel has seen some more minutes over the last couple of games. Is he somebody that you think is ready for a larger role on the team? You know, we met with our bench. That's one of the number of things that we did uh, after the UCLA game and, and really talked about their importance. You know, there are some guys right now that they may not fill the stat sheet, but their role in a game like tonight is vital to come in the game play really hard, be able to rest our starters. 
you know, one of the things that happened to us in the UCLA game is we wore down. We played our starters too many minutes. So you have to believe in your bench, but they have to know what to do when they come in. And I thought our bench did a really good job. Ira, Keanu, you know, they, they came in and made positive plays. But Emmanuel's day will come. He'll eventually be a really good player. But right now, we need him to be a really good defender. Guy takes care of the ball, and he did that tonight. The way you guys were able to string together stops tonight, is, have you been able to pinpoint what the difference is effort-wise tonight versus UCLA and how you can get them to, to play with a harder effort like they did tonight? Well, you know, the one thing, let me just clarify this. UCLA is the hardest team in our conference to defend. Statistically, they're the best offensive team in our conference. When they win games and they've won their fair share, they're usually rolling on offense. So even with our best effort, they're a difficult team to defend. I thought, you know, Aaron Holiday was a great player the other night. And sometimes you have to tip your hat to the opponent. Did we play our best? No, we absolutely didn't. But part of why it felt that way is we didn't play our best against a great offensive team. Tonight, we played against a very good offensive team, and we, we did. We played more together. We played harder. And I think it's a lesson that we learned in the UCLA game that we're able to carry into the USC game. And all of our teams are different. You know, we've had our challenges at times this year of being locked in defensively. But uh, tonight, we did a lot of good things. And, you know, I'm anxious to show our team that because keep showing them all the times they don't do it. It's nice when you can mix in a few times to show when they can. Do you think that persistent message is that you've given them about, hey, you're pretty good on offense, but defense lacks a lot, is sinking through, is making progress? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They hear it a lot. Yeah. Washington goes, uh, beat you guys, lose to Oregon, in the Oregon schools twice. UCLA comes here and wins, loses an ASU. Virginia loses today at home. What does it say about college basketball today, especially as the road gets closer to March? You know, I don't know how much different it is. It's just the teams that have been at the top for decades are, are younger now than they used to be. And youth and everything, you're, you're more vulnerable. The, the less experienced teams are more vulnerable. You know, I watch Xavier right now, and, you know, they're pulling out these hard victories by one point, and they're epic finishes, and they've been on the positive end of it. You know, you think about Mercura and Trayvon Blewett. They played against us in a Sweet 16 when Stanley Johnson and P.J. were here. <laughs> it's a long time ago. So, you know, that experience plus talent maybe puts them in a different category. So I think that's the one difference, but... Look, we've been on top of the Pac-12 a lot in my nine years. I think we've had, what, 12 road sweeps in nine years? That shows you how hard it is to win both games on the road. So uh, that's where we head next, and uh, so we have to do a good job being, being ready to go. What do you expect from – I mean, they obviously have had Bradford game against Arizona State. Always going to be electrically charged, you know, energy-wise. But as you now kind of getting their feet back under them, two straight wins, beat UCLA by 10 points tonight. What's the atmosphere going to be like, and what, you know, what are you going to try? Or I guess, what, how are you going to get you guys up for that? I, mean, I'm sure you I hope we, I don't have to get them up. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a terrific opponent, great atmosphere, rivalry. It's, uh, you know, this weekend and, and next week is, is kind of why you come to a place like Arizona. You, you want to play in big games that matter. And, uh, you know, next week, really every game from this point will be big. But we respect Arizona State a great deal be foolish for anyone to think differently. They have an excellent team. And like I said at the beginning here, their, their home court I know has grown in terms of attendance. And I think that's great for our conference. And I think we're looking forward to the challenge. Uh, we know it won't be easy, but uh, we'll be there on Thursday night. Uh, There's one thing I'm following up on the reserve to talk about. Uh, Ira, you went, you have, they had a few layups. You went to Ira uh, in the first half there. And I didn't know, and he didn't play the other night. I didn't know, was there something he's seen in him or, or looking for tonight as opposed to the other night with him? Nope. Oh, uh, Brilliant coaching decisions? Yeah. We're just trying to get a, you know, a lot of energy off our bench and we get some talented young guys.